Good. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome. Thank you for your attendance. Uh, can everyone hear? Yes. It's one. <laughs> How is everyone? Yeah, thanks very much. Yes, loud. Thank yeah, you. Loud and clear. Loud and clear. Well, thanks very much. I'll tell you the meeting open. My name's Alan McGraw. I'm the mayor. Uh, thanks very much for your time tonight. Uh, could I start first of all by acknowledging that we are meeting on the ancestral land of the Ngunnawal people. I recognise the Ngunnawal as the traditional custodians and pay respect to the elders of the community and their descendants. Thank you for coming along tonight or visiting Zoom. On behalf of my fellow councillors, we're proud to present an overview of the 2022-23 operational plan. Long-term financial plan, delivery program, and associated documents. To achieve what we want by the year 2042, the community strategic plan is broken down into more achievable objectives through a four-year delivery program. One of the greatest challenges for all councillors, particularly in rural areas, remains the need to balance the provision of real improvements for local community with the need to undertake maintenance and renewal works on local infrastructure, and to do so with limited resources. We encourage you to take a submission form and provide comments in relation to any of the documents highlighted tonight. Uh, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I'd like to remind everyone that uh, it has been recorded, so watch your P's and Q's, please. <laughs> I think it's probably appropriate now that I should hand over to uh, the Director of Corporate and Community Services, Lynette Safanet, to uh, uh, Thank you. lead us. Uh, so, I just thought I'd give a brief outline of what the Integrated Planning and Reporting Framework is. Uh, all councillors in New Councils in New South Wales are required to adopt a strategic planning framework, which is set out by the New South Wales government. Uh, these documents outline what council will take, uh, what actions council will take over one, four and 10 years to achieve outcomes expressed by the community in the community strategic plan. The, the community strategic plan is the 10 year Outlook and this sets out the community goals. It also outlines the strategies and measures to achieve the goals. And then the four year delivery program is the um, actions that Council will actually take in re regarding the priorities during its term and progress towards the community goals through actions. And then we have the Council's operational plan, which is a one year outlook. And it details activities council will undertake during the financial year, which we're looking at 2022-23, and implement the delivery program. Council is required to report. Council is required to report on actions and activities on the delivery program and the operational plan every six months. So at six months and 12 months, a report goes to council and that is reviewed and then that is placed on council's website so that the community can track our progress. So if we um, start with the operational plan. The 2022-23 operational plan um, is we are projecting a deficit of um, net operating results before grants and capital and contributions provided for capital purposes, and we're estimating at currently at 550,000. Now this may actually increase slightly due to due to um, some identified essential positions that were missed when we were going through the process, but that will be highlighted through this process. Capital grants income is expected to reduce to levels consistent with pre-COVID. However, grant funding for community events and programs continues to be forthcoming. Um, the projected uh, Capital Works program is 48.8 million for this for the 22-23 financial year. 
However, you will see 20, well, approximately 21 million worth of unfinished projects this current financial year, which will be rolled into next current fund, which will be for the next financial year. Um, all New South Wales, uh, so uh, basically every year the uh, IPAR, the integrated, um, integrated, <laughs> thank you, sorry, re review, uh, allocate a uh, rate peg for councils. Over the last five years, the average has been approximately 3 to 5%, which was the CPI at that point in time. It was a huge shock for all councils to only be granted 1.3% this year. Uh, therefore, the Minister and the Office of Local Government uh, took some action and councils were able to apply for an additional 1% special rate variation, which, took the, which can take the total up to 2.3%. Um, council has applied for this additional 1% and we estimate approximately 118,000 extra income from this 1%. The 1% um, application will see the average rate assessment increase between $7 and $31 per annum in the 22-23 um, financial year. Do you want to take questions as you're presenting? Uh, if you like, yes, we could do that. That's a good yeah. question. Uh, yeah. just when, when are we likely to find out uh, whether that's been successful? The yeah. application on that. Uh, well, when I part... Um, make a determination, uh, which could be any time before the 30th of June or in July. So it's up to them. Within the next couple of months. Okay, thank you. Um, it is most likely that all councils will receive the 1%, given the, um, uh, like, I guess, the interpretations of both the Minister and the Office of Local Government and the discussions that they've been having. It's almost um, guaranteed that councils will get the 1%. Uh, the next couple of slides are just um, some information about our revenue sources and our expenditure. So the revenue source here, so our total revenue is estimated to be $40.4 million, excluding capital grants and contributions of $32,000. And it's hard to see on the slide, but um, the rates and annual charges, 48% of our revenue is, comes from rates and annual charges. 15% from user fees, user charges and fees. Interest and investment revenue was zero this year. It's less than 1%. We're hoping that um, as the rates start to increase, it's not good for the mortgages, but it's good for the investments. So hopefully that will start to increase. Uh, grants and contributions for operating purposes are 12% of our total revenue. And grants and contributions for capital purposes make up 18% of our revenue. Other income is 2% and net gains from disposal of assets is 9%. So that, that's our estimate, um, you know, split of where all the revenues will come from. Annette, could I ask a question, please? Sure. Just back to the first one, 48%. Do you have a breakup of percent for rates and also the annual charges? Yes, breakup. and that is in the operational plan document. You'll be able to find that. Okay. Um, as an example of expenditure by type, so we're looking at $33.5 million expenditure in accordance with the revenue, you know, 44% of that is going to be uh, made up of employee benefits and on costs. The borrowing costs are 3% at this point in time. Materials of contractors, 32%. Um, depreciation and, and amortisation is 18% and other expenses, 3%. So that's just a quick overview for you. Um, please refer to the operational plan document that is on the website and has um, the assumptions for this for the um, expenditure and the revenue for the next financial year. So if we move to the delivery program, which is the four year period from 22 to 26. Details, this, this document, as we mentioned earlier, details actions staff will take and how they will be funded. Updates provided to council on a six monthly basis and updates are available on council's website. 
Um, each of the directors will go through their areas in this regarding the delivery program. So we'll start off with corporate and community services. Corporate and community services are concentrating on youth, you know, creating regular youth activities, events and programs, supporting young people to access local education, training and employment. Community events such as supporting community events and programs. Economic development to support local businesses to grow and also to promote the region as an ideal location for businesses, industry and tourism. We have a small budget of $50,000 for youth and community events and programs for 22-23. On top of this, we actively source grant funding to assist with community activities. And some examples of that are the Yes Valley Christmas Parade and Markets, um, the Alive in the Park youth music and art experience that's happening this Saturday, monthly youth activities to be held throughout different villages, Youth Council um, coming together to assist with ideas and coordination of programs, events and activities. Provide assistance during COVID to community members in need through um, Vine Food Care, Headspace, Gin and Dairy and Valmar to name a few. We support the Murray Bateman Field Days, the Yash Show, the Canberra Regional Wine Association. We hosted a small business month, New South Wales Small Business Month program in with the Yass Valley Business Chamber this year, and that will be an annual event. Um, we email Yass Valley community groups and businesses whenever there is a grant funding information or information available for businesses to grow. In 22-23, we have approximately 300,000 from a reconnect funding for communities events. And we welcome any ideas, so please feel free to put those forward. Over to James with the infrastructure and assets. Okay, um, so infrastructure and assets. So I'm not going to go through everything we're doing because there's over the next four years there's a there's a fair few. But I thought I'd highlight like some of the um, the priority major capital projects. Uh, this is separate to roads. Roads will be next. So um, water treatment plant upgrade. I think we're all tracking the water treatment plant upgrade. Stage one is happening at the moment, um, which is going um not going as fast as i would like but it is happening um and uh it's um it, it's ongoing we're still in negotiations with depot and department of primary industries not department of primaries department of planning and environment um about the um stage two uh, and what that might look like and how we might get to there uh, so we'll keep working on that um the current sewage treatment plant um is nearly at maximum capacity. It's got a few years left, depending on how fast development goes. Uh, that's anywhere between about six and eight years. So over the next four years, we will have to start all the work. Um, these things take five or six years to get planned. So we'll have to start planning for a new sewage treatment plant um, in the next um, 12 to 18 months with looking about getting it improved sometime in about four years time. Uh, Craig Mill Precinct, we've um, been through that a number of times at council and I'm briefed the um, some members on it before, but that's the uh, refurbishment of or the knockdown of the current council offices uh, where they are now and the, uh, the site we're on to build a, a new administration building, um, a new library, which is probably the most exciting part of the whole um, pro program, I think. Uh, the refurbishment of the Crago Mill, um, which for those who haven't had a chance to go inside it, I think will be a, an excellent space uh, for a whole range of different things once it's uh, finished, um, through, from community spaces, cafe, arts, um, and there's an amazing little basement down there, which I'm assuming someone will come up with an amazing idea on how to how to use. Uh, and then the um, commercial building, but the primary focus of the what we are calling the commercial building is co-working uh, to allow people to stay here in Yass and work as opposed to having to truck to Canberra every day, given we're looking at increased development in Canberra. Um, heated pool. Um, so we're looking at the development of a heated pool in Yass uh, on a number of different fronts, um, either through a commercial partnership, a commercial arrangement or a um, council constructed heated pool. Um, that is currently ongoing. There's been lots of work done over the last few years and we're, uh, we're doing work now. Um, I have a meeting this week or next week with a pool architect. Uh, so we're, we're getting on to that one. That will require um, 
a significant amount of funding to get to, but we'll uh, we'll work our way through that one. Uh, the Yas Spur Line, again, another project that's been ongoing for a number of years. Uh, the Spur Line runs from uh, Crago Street right the way through to the current railway station, um, and that uh, we'll be looking to upgrade that to an active transport corridor, so cycling, walking, scooters, and the like, uh, which will hopefully be used. Um, the Yass Rail Bridge, which is, I think, an amazing piece of uh, early 1900s um, rail bridge architecture, but that's just me as an engineer. Um, and so we're uh, we're looking forward to, to using that as well. Um, we're currently working through um, a number of issues there uh, to do with the licensing of the, the rail line. Uh, we seem to be actually getting some traction now, which is good. Um, Memorial Hill Restoration, Again, another project that will take a, a number of years, uh, probably done in parts, as we're not likely to get the, the large sum of money needed to do it in one hit. Uh, so we'll look at continual works on the Memorial Hall. We'll also look for large grant opportunities to do large projects as well. Um, Mine Batman Winery Trial, the first stage of that was done uh, based on the grant funding and the, the contribution from council that was available. Uh, there's still a bit to go. Um, we'll look to Look to complete that. Uh, the only section at this point in time that uh, we'll have to wait um, is the section from Anchell Lane through to McIntosh Circuit, um, mainly because that's a 100 kilometre an hour section of the Barton Highway, which is probably not safe for, for bikes and crossing at this point in time. Um, and Mullen Chairman Category 1 Playground, um, a big issue within the Mullen Chairman community. And we're uh, working on that. Um, there's been a number of promises made by political parties, but we're also looking at other options for delivering a Category 1 playground at, at a yet-to-be-determined location in Murrum Bateman, but that's, uh, that's on the cards. Next slide. Next slide, please. Oh, close. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so roads again, uh, as with the capital projects, very dependent on grant funding and what grants are available and how much grant we can get. But the uh, the current areas um, that I'm looking at that are in need of some some major work. Uh, so these are the priorities we're looking at at this point over the next few years for grants. Uh, Back Creek crossing. Uh, so at the moment. Uh, Back Creek, we've got a, a, a significant grant uh, for Back Creek Road, uh, the upgrade of the, the worst section of Back Creek Road, uh, but that doesn't include the crossing, uh, which closes off and blocks people in on Back Creek. Uh, so that is a that is a priority to fix. Um, the Tallagander Lane, uh, the low level crossings at, or um, areas at the southern end of Tallagander Lane, again, um, cause some serious issues and I'd like to get some money to fix those up as they're available. McIntosh Circuit in Murrum Bateman, obviously it's a, uh, an area where there's a significantly increased traffic. Uh, we're unsure of the quality of the road. It was built a long time ago. Um, so there's some, some work that needs to be done there, but there's also some safety work and, and making it a, a, a much better access route because it's likely to be the primary access route in and out of Murrum Bateman in coming years. Uh, so probably not looking to start that one for about another two years, uh, waiting for all the major developments to finish before we go and build a nice new road. Um, don't want to wreck them with heavy trucks in the first couple of weeks. Um, I've made an absolute mistake here. Oh, that should be right. That should be Sutton by the And so for those poor people in Sutton, that's uh, Gundaroo Sutton Road is what was in my brain, uh, but that's Sutton Bypass, not Gundaroo Bypass. I don't intend to bypass Gundaroo unless someone <laughs> really wants that. Um, but that should be Sutton Bypass. Uh, again, something that's been discussed for a long time. Uh, community safety and traffic issues from three right angle turns through Sutton has been um, identified um, as, a, as a major issue. Um, there's a lot of work to get a bypass done. Um, so the Sutton bypass work is all those initial, all those initial things. I, if we get it done in the next four years and built, I'd be incredibly surprised. But uh, mainly looking here at um, design work, identifying routes, finding finding the land that needs to be acquired, um, and and then trying to secure grants uh, in order to deliver that work. Um, 
Confield Road reshooting. We had a previous for four or five years, we did very little unsealed road resheating because of the uh, dry weather um, and not, unable to do it. So we're trying to catch up on that. Uh, so that's putting a fair bit of money towards that out of grants at this point in time. And we'll continue to seek more money to, to do unsealed road resheating uh, to try and get the, the unsealed roads back up to speed. Uh, that unsealed road resheating also include, at this point in time, we also include all the drainage work that needs to go with that to try and extend the life of the roads. Um, so that, Makes it better. Uh, Gundaroo Sutton Road and Mulligan's Flat Road. Um, these are major exit routes from Canberra now. Um, the roads themselves aren't in, a, in great quality um, for the volume of traffic that they currently get. So, looking at upgrades specifically to intersections uh, and some of the, the, the worst areas on those roads. Um, again, this is all grant funded. So, as the grants become available, depending on the grants that are available, we'll look to, look to do that work. Um, that is the, the, the new and upgrade work uh, schedule. Um, there's a lot more to it, a lot of smaller projects, a lot of bits and pieces uh, that are con contained in a lot of different plans. Um, so if you look through the delivery, delivery plan, you'll see uh, the likes of conducting, trying to finish all the different works that we have on all the different recreation grounds and sports fields um, through the master plans that we have for each of those areas. Um, all those things are still being worked on. Um, there's just too many of them to mention. Um, operational impacts, the things we're doing to try and uh, improve our operational effectiveness. Uh, um, so the big, the big chain, big one in this year uh, is an additional parks and gardens team. Uh, we currently only have six operational parks and gardens staff. Uh, this will give us another team of three, um, giving us a 50% increase. Um, we're planning on basing the team at Murrum Bateman at this point in time, uh, and they will look after Murrum Bateman, Gundaroo and Sutton primarily, is the operational program we're looking at, uh, allowing the others to look after Yass, North and South, North and out to, um, out to where Jasper, uh, hopefully giving us a much higher um, service level uh, across the board, assuming it doesn't rain for another 150 days this year or next year once we bring those in. Um, Unsealed road maintenance. So this is a. Um, so at this point in time, uh, we've fully funded the unsealed road maintenance team uh, this year, um, which has given us three grading crews full time. Uh, previous years, uh, we've had a construction team which has been funded by a grant funding um, for a majority of their work. Um, so we've had, had to fund fully fund a team out of operational funding this year. Um, which has taken a little bit of extra funding um, so that we can apply more um, horsepower to the uh, unsealed road maintenance crews, um, as well as fully funding the drainage team out of uh, operational funds as well, so they can focus solely on road maintenance as opposed to new construction tasks as well, um, which are generally grant funded. Um, and that, that, that is solely aimed at catching up basically on the last 12 months of last 12 to 18 months now of um, problems and what we foresee in the next probably four or five months of continued rain over winter. Um, and that will keep us fairly busy. Uh, waste services, so we're looking at a review of uh, waste services. Uh, so looking at green waste collection, um, that will be something we'll have to do early on. Um, we need to send out a survey on that to get a, a percentage. Uh, Rumours abound, um, I don't know how many are true, that it's likely to be legislated in the future that we will have to have a green waste collection anyway, so we, um, we need to need to get onto that anyway. Um, potentially expanding the collection area, um, new big develop developments at Gundaroo and Sutton, uh, big, big developments here in Yass and at Murrum Bateman uh, look like expanding our collection area reasonably significantly uh, and what impact that will have on our um, our fleet of vehicles collection, whether we go to a contractor, those type of things will have to be reviewed um, and that will be part of this delivery plan period. Uh, we'll need to do that. Um, and food, what's called FOGO, food organics and garden organics. Um, they are currently there's programs to collect those in or trial programs in the ACT. Uh, in Europe, it's quite common uh, for those to be collected separately. Um, there's no talk yet of legislation to push us that way, um, but 
it's something we need to start considering and looking at as to whether we're going to go down that track. Um, so that's what we're looking at in waste. Um, a few general projects that are across the board. Uh, so we're looking at uh, implementing a new asset management software, which will have better maintenance reporting and tracking. Uh, so that will, one of the things we're looking at is allowing people to report, report a pothole online as opposed to having to ring in uh, and then that will go into the system and you will get a, a text message or an email to let you know when it's been reviewed, when it's been programmed and when the, the work's been done. Um, but that's uh, that's a, a program that is available where we are working at getting that in. Um, geospatial information system improvements, uh, council's not on dial before you dig, um, which is the main thing that needs to be improved here. So knowing where our water pipes are and where our sewer is, so that people can actually get them in dial before you dig. So um, there's fairly much job in that. Um, so we need to get someone in to actually get that work done. Um, electric vehicle adoption. So we've been looking at this now for probably, I think I started in about the second or third week that I was here. Um, so I'm a fan of electric vehicles. So we're looking at the, the process and the challenges for electric vehicle adoption within council uh, and seeking um, options for um, bringing electric vehicles to the council fleet, uh, both for primarily starting with the um, the, um, the the light vehicle fleet, but then looking towards things like lawn mowers um, and some of the smaller maintenance trucks uh, as those become more more um, more acceptable. Um, solar power installation. So we've put solar power on two of the facilities already. Looking to a, a third shortly so we'll keep uh, keep working on those um, as we're going through um, and keep looking at options for solar power installation both through grants but also through, all through also through savings uh, within the electrical um, bills that we have to pay um, digital water meters um, so a digital water meter system that has uh, automatic reporting, uh, so we don't have to do water meter reads, they're done automatically. Um, it's, it's, it's around, it's, it's achievable. Uh, yes, it's slightly difficult in achieving it, but we're currently investigating that, um, and there are grants available for, for doing it, so we're looking at those now. Uh, and the final one, which will take a lot of, our, uh, a lot of time and effort, uh, is leasing, leasing and licensing of council managed land. Um, in 2017, the legislation changed um, and we haven't fully caught up yet. So we need to go through and occupy everyone who currently occupies or uses council land and whether or not they do so under a general use agreement, a lease or a license. Um, and those have to be done. Um, some of those will have to come back through council. Some of those will just be able to be continually managed. Um, but they're the, they're the main operational things for the next 12 months. Lynette, sure. can I just jump in? Sorry, there's there's people waiting in the in the waiting room online that you might just want to let in. We, we can't see any white people waiting, Kayla. Oh, okay. It just says it on mine that there's people waiting to join, but all good. All good. Okay, thank you. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Lynette. The planning environment team were made up of three sections, which is our environmental services, development control, and strategic planning teams. And We've got a range of actions for the next 12 months. A lot of them are business as usual type actions through to um, strategic planning pro projects. We have had a fairly ambitious program for 21, 22. So our intention is to carry over those projects that are not completed in this financial year, which I'll identify as we go through. And um, we have actually commenced all but one of our pro projects identified in the operational plan for this year. So in terms of environmental services, again, I won't highlight everything, just the main parts of 
what we're looking to deliver next year. So in terms of companion animals, we're looking at community-based programs to increase compliance in terms of microchipping and registration, but also um, a, de a community-based desexing program for dogs and cats. Uh, just to encourage people to desex their animals at the, but at the same time also getting them microchipped and registered as part of the program. We'll also be doing uh, community-based microchipping programs throughout the financial year. In terms of our food inspection program, which will continue as it does every year, we're looking to participate next financial year in the Scores on Doors program. So. This uh, you may have seen in other council areas, it's been around for quite some time. We're essentially following the food inspection. We have a star rating type certificate. It's a state based program, which we then give to the food premises and it's up to them whether or not they put the certificate up. Priority weeds. So again, we'll be continuing our roadside spraying weed program. We have $200,000 in the budget for the next financial year to undertake this work. They, the priority weeds are usually determined through the weeds advisory group and will continue our high risk pathways inspection program. And in terms of compliance, we took on compliance staff in this financial year. So we'll be looking at the enforcement policy and the compliance framework generally for council, as well as uh, our ongoing compliance work that we're doing. In terms of strategic planning, just in terms of rollovers, I thought I might just touch on those first. So the master plan projects that we're currently doing for YAS, Bookham and We Jasper will be rolled over. All of those projects have commenced. The comprehensive DCP work is underway. And um, as a sideline, we're doing the engineering design standards manual as well. And that particular manual will feed in partly into the DCP, but we're also at the same time reviewing um, council's policies with the intention that policies will move into the DCP if they can. The planning proposal, the flood planning controls, that's the one project we haven't commenced this year, but we're looking to do undertake in the next financial year. That's an internal project to take the recommendations of the floodplain risk management work into our local environmental plan. We've commenced the open space strategy and the automation 10.7 certificates, which is an internal project the certificates are used mostly in contracts of sale. That project, we're actually up to testing phase as of yesterday. So um, that project will near finish at the financial year, but will probably roll over partly into the into July. In terms of new projects for the next financial year, we are looking at an active transport strategy. So we're interested in building on the work from the open space strategy by looking at how our um, footpaths, shared paths, connect to other parts of, you know, other existing networks that we have, where we can extend those so that people can um, enjoy more of our, of our um, council area. So we've got 65,000 um, allocated for that project. North Murray Abatement strategic planning work so um, this involves a number of parcels of land in North Borough Abatement that have been identified for future residential development. We've started some preliminary work and that will commence in earnest in July. We'll be completing the Climate Change and Natural Disaster Action Plan, which will be uh, building on the work that we completed in December last year. Framework for biodiversity stewardship agreements. So we're looking into the future around the land holdings that Council has, their biodiversity value and whether or not um, there is opportunities there to protect that land further, but also being able to sell any credits that might be available on that land through the biodiversity program or whether we need to use those credits um, for our own internal projects. We have 80,000 set aside for the Bynalong and Bounding Master Plans. I'll commence later in the financial year once we've completed the three that we have going at the moment. Sorry, what was that figure? 18,000. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the settlement strategy will start some very, very preliminary work in the next financial year. We need to uh, have the water source strategy and the IWCM project completed first. That will inform 
um, what water we have available for future development. But our intention is to start towards the end of the financial year, some preliminary work on the strategy, and that'll incorporate outcomes from the housing issues paper. We've got 20,000 set aside for a flora and fauna management plan for Riverbank, Riverbank Park. That was a recommendation of the Victoria Park master plan, which we completed last calendar year. And we've identified two positions, two new positions in the strategic planning team. So firstly, a contributions planner. This will be, we're hoping, a shared position between us and two other councils that I'm currently talking to. They're quite interested. Looking at dealing with future reform and contributions and uh, lever leveraging voluntary planning agreements and contributions plans. We also have we also have provision for a contract strategic planner that will be a part time position as well, and it will be driving the North Murray Bateman project for council, and that will be a, that will be a cost recovery. There will be cost recovery for that position over time. In terms of development control, really for them, I'm just identifying that we've got three new positions in that in that area proposed. So uh, we're affected, as, it, as is everyone else, by labour market shortages. We advertise fairly regularly for planning and building certifying staff with some with some success, but they're difficult to get. So the plan is that in the next financial year, we will start doing a bit more work on growing our own talent. So position for a trainee planner and a second position for a trainee building certifier. Building certifiers are particularly difficult to get at the moment or have been for quite some time, actually. We'll also have um, a coordinator of planning administration. This position will be responsible for, for overseeing, essentially, work in the planning portal, portal um, trying to move administrative tasks into the administration area to allow um, our technical staff to work on their assessment work and yet to be provided some targets for development assessment in the next financial year. That's me. All right, so that's um, a brief overview of the delivery program. Please refer the document because it is quite detailed on actions that we will undertake during the four year period. 26. So we'll move on to an overview of the 22-23 revenue statement, which is another document in the suite. And on the screen, you can see a summary of the income that we're expecting for this financial year. The schedule of fees and charges details the range of fees for 22-23. And in accordance with the Local Government Act, Section 608, Council may charge and recover an approved fee for any service it provides including supplying a service, product or commodity, giving information, providing a service in connection with the exercise of council's regulatory functions and receiving an application for approval, granting an approval, making an inspection and issuing a certificate. Council continues to look for, to increase its revenues by applying for funding. In corporate and community directorate, we have been applying for youth, community and small business events and programs which have been available. A couple of examples are a $5,000 New South Wales Small Business Month grant, $300,000 reconnecting regional New South Wales, $10,000 for Jubilee tree planting at Bowning, and $5,000 for winter school holiday activities. Uh, the next document in the suite is the 2022-26 Workforce Management Plan. And Council plans its workforce needs in accordance with the service delivery expectations of the community. The Workforce Management Plan assists Council to develop solutions to issues such as attraction and retention of staff, skill shortages, an ageing workforce, succession planning and managing work-life balance. <coughs> uh, the next um, lot of documents are the Asset Management Plans. And um, maybe, James, would you like to do a brief overview of these? So as part of the uh, asset management strategy um, that we've developed, uh, each, each asset class, so roads, stormwater, sewer, uh, 
uh, water, uh, buildings and facilities, parks and recreation, and business assets, so caravan park and swimming pool, uh, each have an, a management plan that looks at how those assets will be managed going into the future, uh, including operations and maintenance through to uh, upgrades, upgrades and renewal, or renewal upgrades and or replacements. Um, those plans are, are new. Our council hasn't generally done a lot of this in the past. The only only real one we've had in recent years has been the roads one. Uh, and so these plans are, are currently being drafted. Um, we've been working on them for the last 12 months, um, starting in some priority areas and trying to solve it. So the idea is to try and look at a long-term plan for the assets, noting the cost of actually maintaining and renewing some of these assets as well beyond what council can actually raise within its own resources, so relies on grants. Uh, these plans identify all those areas. Um, as I said before, they're in the early stage of development. Um, some are still in a very draft form. Others are, are slightly more advanced. The road one is probably the most advanced of the lot. Um, they will continue to be developed as in coming years as we go, and they will build on uh, community engagement, looking at the, the, the upgrades and the new works or the, the renewal works that we need to undertake and putting those into a a 10 year strategic plan for delivering asset management. Okay, thank you. So, um, if any of the um, community online have some questions, now's the time to ask those, or we encourage you to put in a submission. One of the things that we will do following tonight, the reason that we're recording this is so that we can place this onto Council's website, along with the presentation from tonight and the submission form. So all of those will be available on Council's website from tomorrow. Uh, Sophie. <coughs> Thanks, Lynette. Um, <clears throat> yeah, look, I think that's a really great overview it's Andrew here obviously um, just just wondering what the um, what the what the broad plan I mean obviously there's a lot of development in yes at the moment um, residentially um, at the, the, the schools are really full um, the daycares are really full you know the, the main street obviously is going to come under increasing pressure in the next few years. I'm just wondering what the plan is for that moving forward. Well, Andrew, we've, we've certainly uh, kicked off the uh, the Main Street uh, strategy work. Uh, that's that's underway at the present time, and that's to try and improve the public uh, the public area of the of the Main Street. Obviously, uh, we will be encouraging uh, adjoining landowners to also. Uh, take the take uh, from that lead and, and uh, look at the presentation of their buildings to the uh, uh, to the main street as a, as a way of uh, improving the appearances, but but also using that as a way of trying to attract uh, new businesses into town and new and, and expand existing businesses. So that's something that we've started, and that will continue into early next year. Once we've got that. Uh, plan that will then allow us to be able to position ourselves to chase some uh, uh, serious grant money because uh, uh, if you don't have the plans, uh, usually you don't get the grants. So it's it's going to perform a, a, a solid basis for, uh, for our operations. Uh, residential development, well, we're, we're continuing uh, Continuing to uh, uh, do the work in in uh, North Murray Bay. Uh, that's certainly one of our growth areas. But we've already got a couple of uh, developments in town here at Yass that are that have commenced and are underway, um, which is uh, which will be you know great in terms of being able to uh, address some of the supply issues that we are experiencing at the moment. And we're certainly encouraging. Uh, new developments to incorporate a diversity of housing types so that we can, again, hopefully address two things, supply and affordability uh, for uh, uh, 
um, for new home buyers that are moving into the area. Okay. Um, Jeff, you've got your hand up. Yes, thanks, Lynette. Um, yeah, thank you, uh, Mayor and Council, Deputy Mayor, Councillors, and the Executive uh, for inviting uh, um, the, the Business Chamber here tonight. So we we do appreciate that, and we we appreciate the uh, the ongoing close in, engagement um, with you all. Um, so. Um, yeah, we've, we've definitely, uh, I see there was a lot of value in seeing um, the presentation firsthand tonight. And just one of the things we'll look to do um, through the chamber is go back. We've got our committee meeting next week and um, we'll, we're going to uh, discuss uh, just some of our notes on this. And um, I just wanted to um, ask, uh, when when uh, do you think the, the recording um, of this meeting will be actually put up online? Because we. We would like to uh, put it through our uh, newsletter network as well. Uh, that, that's uh, planning to be put up tomorrow, Jack. Uh, so yeah, the first, first thing in the morning that uh, we'll we'll try and get the, uh, the the recording uploaded so that uh, the whole community can actually uh, see the first one of these uh, travelling road shows that we're putting on through uh, the various communities. Yep, no, that, that's fantastic. And and just another question on that. In terms of uh, submitting some uh, feedback, will that also be um, recorded uh, on the website along with the recording, just a, um, the, the avenue for actually submitting feedback in on tonight's presentation? Well, we, we're still recording at the moment, so uh, certainly the discussion about it will be part of the, uh, part of the recording that we, pu we publish, um, unless anyone's got any significant objections to that. Yeah, no, no. What I what I mean is, um, in in terms of making a submission tonight, after we've been able to have a chat oh, with the community and various members of the of the chamber, um, how how would we go about making a formal submission? Well, we're certainly looking for written submissions. Uh, I think the closing, uh, we'll have an online uh, submission form for that. Uh, uh, as part of a link to, uh, that we put up tomorrow on the recording. So I think we're looking to uh, uh, for submissions by the 31st of um, yeah. 31st of May. Uh, June 6th. Okay. 6th of June. So 6th, 6th of June. Uh, we're looking at, so that, that gives us a chance to include all of those submissions in the council report when they come to uh, well, first of all, they've got to consider the submissions that they receive. Uh, there might be some adjustments in response to some of those submissions that come in, uh, and then council will make the final decision at its June council meeting. So that that's the rough uh, approach that we're we're taking with the submissions. But the you know we're right up, right now we're up to um, the point in a uh, time of getting it out there on public exhibition and uh, and, and welcoming submissions from. Uh, broadly across the community to fine tune the plans. Okay, that that, that sounds good. Um, I, I do have two other questions, if, if that's all right. Um, do, I, I noticed that council's looking to, to employ um, um, additional staff, and I, I think that's great, especially uh, new trainees from um, from local uh, residents here, here in uh, Gas. I, I think that's uh, to be applauded. Um, the question I've got is, so council's looking to um, uh, employ a contributions um, planning officer. Is is there anyone currently working in a full-time role in council um, uh, on a grants basis, like a full-time grants officer who's, who's seeking to uh, submit applications? Um, Jack, we don't have an individual full-time staff grants officer, but we have uh, several staff who um, undertake grant applications throughout the different areas. Okay. All right. Um, the, just my second question was in terms of the, the current projects that are, are taking place at the moment, such as the, uh, the, the master planning work that's been, um, um, being undertaken with the advisory committees, is there any uh, specific timeline and pathway that's been uh, um, decided upon in terms of having those completed? Jack, it's Julie. Yes, there is a timeline. It might be best if I provide that information to you separately because I don't have it with me just at the moment. 
but um, we do have meetings scheduled for the next couple of months for the master plans and looking to, I think they'll be finished, say, around August, September. But how about us? Are you happy for me to send you something separately? Yeah, that'd be fantastic. I'd appreciate that. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, no more questions. No further questions. Can I do a plug for the open space strip survey? Please do. Please do. We've reopened the open space um, strategy survey online for the community and for groups as well, but um, I'm doing a plug for the individual surveys. So if you haven't filled out the survey, you have until the 31st of May to do that. And um, we would really like to hear your feedback. We've had good feedback so far, but it would be great to get some more. So it is available online and I did Google it tonight and I just put in Yas Council open space strategy and I was able to find it. But if you have trouble finding it, let me know, but spread the word. Thanks. Thanks, Julie. Any further questions? I agree. All right, sorry. You are updating that now. Yes. <laughs> I was just going to say it's not updated. Um, just a couple of uh, quick questions, James. It's good to hear that you're enthusiastic about electric vehicles. And it looks like in the four-year plan, so there's, no, there's nothing happening in that first year. Am I right in that? Or? So at, at this point in time, um, the, the cost benefit, well, my current analysis of the cost benefit says it's not, not for a small council of our size, we, we can't really afford to go down that line just yet. Um, my discussions with a number of the providers are that within 12 to 18 months when more of the cars actually make it into Australia and we have a, a better price comparison um, and maybe the government does some stuff that we want them to do, um, it will be a far more, um, it'll provide a far better option for council in order to do that. Um, the, the work is still ongoing. Like I said, I've been working on this now for 12 months. Um, I, I don't see within the next financial year council purchasing electric cars at this point in time unless something changes uh, at the federal election. And that's why I've put it there. If it, if it does change, then I'll definitely come back because, as I said, I like electric cars and I'm keen to get I want one from me, <laughs> which is more than anything else. And the other question is, I know we don't work on rumour in, in, in setting a financial budget, but I think there, there is quite a strong possibility that green bins, and I'm being pestered by a large number of people about green bins, and why haven't we got them? Um, and we might talk about that later, but we're not putting any money aside at the moment for that possibility that we might need to go down that. Because you you were mentioning about the cost of the truck, yes, as being significant. Yep. So again, um, noting that it takes us at this point to get a truck will take us twelve months. Yeah. Uh, so doing this, so. In order to go down that path without being legislative to go down it. So previously we've gone out to surveys and we need to get a 50% response. We haven't even been able to get a 50% response, let alone a 50% positive response uh, to community surveys for green bins, uh, which is the requirement under the Act at this point in time. Um, if we can get a 50% positive response um, of the residents of, of the households in Yas, uh, then we can go down that path. We will then need to order the truck and it will take us 12 months to get the truck. So we won't actually roll it out in the next financial year. It'll be the financial year after. Um, because we've got to do the survey, we've then got to do the planning, we've got to do all the orders so that it won't actually roll out until the if, financial if year it, after. Sorry, final, final. Uh, if, if it was mandated, would there be, do you think the state government, this is being optimistic, would support councils in, in, in getting that sort of uh, asset? I'm optimistic, I'm optimistic that there will be grants available. Um, whether the state government can somehow magic up the what will most likely have to be another four or five hundred rubbish trucks um, in order to do the collection, um, I'm not convinced. Well, there is an election coming up. Yeah, <laughs> so, I can be optimistic. Sorry, but I just just the difficulty we're having in securing specialist vehicles at the moment. Right. Um, I because they have to be 
the trucks them you have to get the trucks themselves and then the specialist um backs on them um, we're we're anywhere from six to 18 months depending on what we're ordering we got a we're quite lucky we got a um, a small commercial truck uh, that took us about seven months so that was um that's a small commercial truck if we're after a big side loader that we're we're after for one of these um that's why i'm looking at not this financial not next financial year the financial year after before we start any of these yeah, you'd, you'd certainly expect if, uh, if the government mandated for it there yeah. be some carrots that went with it to assist communities to adjust yeah. so so things things that i've heard yeah, as rumour, um, potentially grants to cover the cost of bins. Um, so we don't actually have to cover the cost of bins. Um, potentially assistance grants to buy trucks um, because they realise, because the issue is, as I said, yeah. there's, there's 127 councils. Um, there's the small number of them already do it. We're only going to need one truck, but other councils may need two or three in order to achieve what they're going to do. So it's going to be at least 200 trucks um, just in New South Wales alone, um, on top of all the other trucks that people are trying to buy at the moment. Um, it's the, the timelines don't look good even if they give us money and then the truck companies, it is the, the, the minute it is mandated, the truck companies or the waste companies will double the price of trucks. Um, that's why I'd like to get in before it's mandated. Um, again, without community agreement under the current legislation that we have. We can't mandate it on the community. Um, if it's not mandated on the community, the cost potentially will blow out. At the moment, it's somewhere um, in the order of $100 per year, um, depending on, well, if we only get half take up, well, that's $200 a year in order to recover costs. Um, given waste is a cost recovery business, not a subsidised, rate subsidised business. Thank you. Any further questions? Oh, we're, we've got 35 minutes to go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm seven o'clock for one Thank you very much. Well, the paper may be closed. Thank you very much for your attendance. Thank you. Well done, right now. I think we need to go.